Hi guys, I'm going to try and teach you Agricola. This is a game in which you're trying to build the best small little farm that you can. So here's everything that you get in the box, all laid out. Okay, and I'm going to go through the pieces one by one. Obviously the instructions and score sheet. And then here we have uh, different resources. So wood, stone, and reed. These are fences. This is a little first player marker. This side's Jason. This side's Andrea. These are feeding troughs. Here's cows, horses, pigs, sheep. And these signify just extra tokens. So if you run out of anything, this is for sheep, etc. This is the main game board. These are extra player to uh, tiles to add on to your farm. Here's each of your farms. So we'll say that this one's Andrea's farm with the red tokens. And this one's Jason's farm with the blue tokens. And these are the, what are called special buildings, these four here. And then these ones here are stalls. And it's a, just another kind of building, but they don't fall under the special building category. Okay. And I've already set up the game to show how you initially set the game. So when you first uh, set it up and get ready to play, you're going to give each player one of these boards, and you're going to give each player nine of these fences, and there are three tokens. Okay? And that will leave eight fences up here, so that's how you know you got the number of fences right. Okay, so I want to First of all, I like to say how you actually win the game. So the way you win is, like I said, make the best farm that you can, and that's signified by points, like a lot of games that uh, we talk about. So uh, at the end of the game, you're going to add up your points. And I'm just gonna tell you this now, and a lot of it might not make sense, but that way you can kind of understand what I'm talking about as I explain the game. So at the end of the game, you're gonna put uh, Andrea here and Jason here, and then you're going to add up your total number of sheep, put it in there, total number of pigs, cows, horses, and then just add up. And this, so this column right here will be your total number of all animals. Then here is special points related to each of those kind of animals. So in the first one, it'll be Andrea's total number of special points coming from sheep. And the way you get that is actually on the side of the box there's a little chart and so it shows there that let's say you have 14 sheep you would get four extra points as it shows at the top of the column if you had let's say 12 horses you'd get six extra points okay but you can also see in this column that it says minus three if you have zero to three of any animal so let's say you only had two pigs and no cows. You would get minus three for each of those guys. So you put all of those numbers into the columns related to each of those extra animals. And then you add up that total here. And then these two are related to how many extra tiles, which are these, that you've added to your farm. And you have to have filled them with either fences or buildings, which I'll get to. So you get four points for each of those that you filled. And then you get a number of points equal to the special points that are on the buildings. Once you've added up all those, then you add up all the gray numbers, add it up, and that signifies how good your farm is. And whoever has the highest points wins. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over the different spots on the main board. This right here, all of the spots that have a little red arrow coming off the side of them, as you can see by all of those, and then these four down here. That signifies that every turn at the beginning of the round, resources are gonna be added to that spot. So every round, a wood is gonna be added here, and three wood will be added here. Additionally, if you take this spot, then you'll also get the first player marker, okay? Stone, one stone will be added here, two stone will be added here. One fence, one of these extra eight that were in the beginning, one fence will be put on top of the top tile off to the side. 
at the beginning of every round. And then this one here says, again, it has a little arrow coming off it. So if there's if this is completely empty, then you put whatever the first thing is. So here you would add one reed to this square. Here you would add a pig to the square if it's empty, a horse, or a cow if they're empty. But if there's anything in that square already, like if there's already a reed in this square, then you would add a sheep. So if there's already a pig, you would add a sheep, a pig, or a sheep. The things don't clear out at the end of a round. So if nobody utilizes a square, then that square continues to accumulate. So eventually this might have six or even nine wood on it. And then when somebody takes that spot, they get everything there. And I didn't mention it before, but this is a worker placement game. So in a given round, only one person can go onto each spot. And as you can tell by the fact that each person only has three uh, markers for their turn, there's only going to be six spots that are taken per round, whereas there's several more than six spots on the board. So things will accumulate from round to round. Uh, so that covers those. This one here does not accumulate. It's just that if somebody puts a worker there, they get one of each of those resources. Here, they can build fences. So if you go here, you get two fences for free, and then an unlimited number of times, you can pay two stone to get one fence. So if you put your worker here, you get two for free, and then if you pay, say, four stone, you would get another two fences for a total of four fences. Here, you get no free fences, but each fence only costs one wood. This here is how you build a stall. And I'll go over what those are, but this allows you to build it. So for one stone and one reed, you get to build a stall. This one here, and it says that, by the way, that you can only do that once. You can only build one stall at a time. But here is to upgrade a stall can turn into a stables. And so if you put a worker here, for five wood or five stone, you can upgrade your uh, stalls to stables. And you can do that an unlimited number of times, but you have to pay for each one. Here is for feeding troughs. By putting a worker here, you get one free feeding trough, and then you can buy an unlimited number for three wood each. And then these two spots are for the special buildings. And these four buildings here are the special buildings. So that covers all of those. Next, we'll go over the buildings themselves. The stall costs, as I said before, three stone and one reed, is one worth one victory point at the end of the game, and can hold three animals. The open stables, there's only one of them, and that's true for all the special buildings, there's only one each. The open stables uh, costs three wood or three stone, is worth two victory points, can hold five animals, and you get one free horse or cow, as it shows on here, when you buy it. And you have to upgrade, that's what this little thing here means, you have to upgrade a stall. See how the building is the same? You have to upgrade a stall to this. So you can't just buy it straight, you have to have a stall already, and then you change it into a stables. This is the shelter, and it's very cheap, it's worth zero victory points, and you get a free single animal of your choice, and it can hold one, uh, one animal. Also cheap, the storage building, it's worth an, a variable amount of victory points at the end of the game, which is however many leftover resources, these things here, you have at the end of the game, halved, rounded down, it's worth that many points. So if you have, say, eight total reed, stone, and wood, then you would get four victory points. And this is the half-timbered house. This shows that you have to build it on top of your cottage. Each player board has a cottage on it to start. And so this replaces the cottage, and it costs three wood, two stone, and one reed. It's worth five victory points and can hold two animals. The cottage is already built, on your board and can hold one animal and is worth zero victory points. So this, as an example, would replace it like so. One thing that's valuable about all the buildings is that 
the edge of a building counts as a fence, thus the yellow look to it. And when I explain the fences, you'll see how that's valuable in itself. So even though the shelter might not look like it's very valuable, it potentially is also worth four fences. And that's true for every single building. Okay, so now I'm gonna cover the animals and how you store the animals. So with your original player board, you can only store one animal. But as the game goes on, you're gonna build fences. And you can only build fences from your personal storage of fences. You cannot take fences from the bank up there to build fences. So if you run out here, you can't build any more fences. So let's say that I paid some money to build fences by going here. And I paid three wood, so now I can build three fences. So what I can do is, I could go like this, and you have to build them at the moment that you buy them. So now I have fully enclosed this area right here. And now I can store two animals in an enclosed area. So each square can hold two animals. Now let's say that instead I had paid six wood. I could go like this. and I have one left over, and I just want to build it here because I have to use them all at that time. Now, this area can hold four animals, but this cannot hold any because that's open, and this can still hold one. So four because there's two spaces, and they can hold two each. Another example would be that if I had only bought that because you cannot remove fences once you've built them, but let's say that before I built my fences, I had bought the storage building and I had it here. Now that counts as a fence just like the cottage does. And so with only four fences, I was able to enclose this whole area. So now we'll go over the feeding troughs. So I'm going to put a stall here for this example. A feeding trough doubles the amount of animals that can be in any enclosed area. So in this example, I can have four animals in here. If I put a feeding trough in there, I can now hold eight animals in there. If I were to put a feeding trough in the stall, I can hold six animals in there. You can only have one feeding trough per square, but you can have an unlimited number in an enclosed area. So for example, I could put another feeding trough here, and now it would be doubled twice. So on its own, it's two, four, and then doubled, so eight, and then doubled again for 16. So I could have 16 animals in this enclosed space, but I could not add any more feeding troughs because there's no more squares to put one in. Another example is the stall here can only have six. I couldn't add another feeding trough to it. But if I were to later upgrade this stall, to a stables, utilizing this spot on the map, this feeding trough would stay there, and now this spot can hold 10 animals. Earlier in the game I said that, or in the video I said that you can add these to your, to your farm. You can add one to either side, and you get four victory points for every one of these tiles that you completely fill somehow. So that could mean putting three buildings on it, or it could mean putting one building and fencing off the rest of it, or just fences. As long as every square is somehow fully enclosed. So if I were to have it like that, this area could hold 10 animals, and I would get four points for this whole thing being used. But if it were just that difference, then this could hold no animals, and this would not get me any points. Just to show another example, if I had a stall there, this could hold eight animals, and I would get four points for this. And just to drive it home one more way, this already holds eight. If I just put one of these in there, this can hold 16 now. If I were to put another one, it could hold 32, although you'll never get to 32 animals. Okay, so now I've populated this with some animals. And this is totally illegal way to have uh, your farm, okay? 
I have this building can hold three and I have three in there. This can hold one. I have one in there. This area here could hold eight because of the feeding trough and two spots. And I have five in there, so I have room to grow. This could hold 16. I have plenty of room to grow. And this could hold five. I still have room to grow. Now, each holding area can only, only hold one kind of animal at a time. So I couldn't see how I have no more room for horses here. I can have horses in as many different different areas as I want, but if I wanted to add another horse to my farm, I have nowhere to put it. So I would have to expand somehow or put a feeding trough in one of these or something along those lines to increase my horse storage. At the end of every round, you're going to get a free animal. They breed. You're going to get a free animal for each type of animal that you have at least two of. So it's not per pair. It's just one free animal for every type of animal that you have two of. So in this example here, I would get one of each kind of animal for free. And I could, for all of these three animals, I could easily accommodate their space. But for the horses, I have nowhere to put them. And so because I have nowhere to place that animal, I would lose it. I don't get to get the free animal. Now, if I had this setup and I were to get another horse, I could put it into here. And you can move the animals into any legal spot at any time. There's no time when you have to do it or whatever. Just as soon as I, even at the end of the round, when I got my free horse, I could say, oh, you know what, I'm gonna move all the horses over here. And then I get my free horse and I'd put them in there. And along with my free sheep and my free pig. So this is what the game's gonna look like when you begin it, because uh, when you begin play, this is kind of the first round. So at the beginning of every round, you're going to, like I said, populate each of these areas that have the little arrow as you need to. So I've added the one wood, the three wood, one stone, two stone, pig, horse, cow, and reed to those spots. Now remember here, this shows that you add one fence and you're going to get to expand if you go here. So I just put one fence on top of the top one of these boards. Now. I'm not going to show you a very good move necessarily, but just show you an example of play. So we'll say that Andrea is going first. So she has the first player marker and her first turn is going to be to go here. So she gets these three wood. Okay. And then Jason decides that he needs some stone. So he goes here, gets these two stone. Now Andrea is going to go here. And this is not one of those accumulation places. This is just, you know, money straight from the bank. So as it shows, you get one of each resource directly from the bank. Okay. Jason is going to go right here. Oh, I didn't put that in a good spot, but he's going to go here just so I can show you what this means. So now, he goes there and that means that he gets to get one of these tiles and he gets whatever fences are on the top. So he can decide which side of his board to put it on. And he shouldn't have already had this in the beginning of the game, but it's there. So now at that point, he gets to add this to his potential fences that he can buy from. He doesn't get to immediately place that fence, but it's another one for him to purchase from. So his board, since this is the first round of the game, it would be that he added this one. And now he has more places to build, and that shows that. Okay, and we're just going to finish this round so I can show repopulating the map next round. So Andrea has a bunch of wood now. She has four wood, so she decides that she wants to build some fences. So she goes here, and that lets her build one fence for every wood. So she's going to spend all of her wood, and she gets to place these four fences. She has to place them immediately. So she'll put them here here, here, and here. Now this is not enclosed, so she can't store any animals yet, but she has a plan to build more fences in the future. So that's how she decides to take her turn. And lastly, Jason decides that he really wants a pig. So he goes here and gets a free pig. And he only has one place to put it, is right here. If he were to put it in the field, it runs away. So he can only put it right there. So now I'll set up the board for the next round. Okay, so to begin the next round, I, I repopulated the map. And you do that at the beginning of every round. And so nobody took 
the wood from this last round. So now there's two wood here. There's the leftover from last round and then the one that got there this round. I replaced the three wood here. I, I put another one stone here. So now there's two there and I put these two stone back because somebody took that last round. I put another one of the fences from this pile onto here. And because there was already a reed here, then that means that I add a sheep. There was nothing here, so I added a pig. Already a cow, so I added a pig. And already a horse, so I added a sheep. And that's all you do to replenish that. And I took all of these pieces, like any worker placement game, and I returned them to the players. As you may be able to guess here, since I'm putting one of these every round onto here, that's actually what times the game. So there's only eight of these at the beginning. You're gonna put one of those on here every round. And so the game ends when all of these are gone. So on the eighth round, you're gonna put one of those there and that will signify since there's none left that that is the last round of the game. Okay, so now I'm just gonna play again real quick just to show examples of things. So Andrea is still the first player. So she gets to place her first person and she again wants more resources because she wants to build a, st a stall coming up. So she's going to go over here and get this stone. Jason is now also wanting to get a stall and he has some stone, but he needs reed and another stone because he only has two stone. So he's going to go here again or for the first time. He gets them from the bank. And now Andrea is going to go and she saw that Jason was probably going to build a stall and she's very sneaky. So she goes here and she's the only person that's going to get to build a stall this turn. So she just conveniently has the three stone needed and one reed and she gets to build a stall and she's going to place it right here. Now what that's done is that's made this a viable storage area for animals. This is also a storage area for animals and so is this. Now Jason this turn has much harder choices because there's no stalls available to buy. So it might be a good turn for him to stock up on some resources and he's decided, you know what? I don't want her to be first player again. So I'm gonna go here. So that gives him the wood that's there and as this little marker shows, it gives him the first player token. So we get to flip this over to Jason. And now next turn, he's gonna be first player. So Andrea again goes, and now she has a storage place and she wants some cows and some pigs. So she's gonna go here and she can place these. She has many options on where to place them. She thinks a cow would be cool to have at her cottage for fresh milk. So she puts it there and then she's gonna plan on getting a bunch of pigs. So she puts them in here. but. If plans change, she can always move around where they go. And Jason for his last turn is going to go here and get a bunch of wood. He's got big plans. Okay, so round three, I added another, because of this spot, I added one of those fences over here. So now there's two bonus fences on there. I've replaced the wood and over here and now even though this place is only getting one per turn nobody's ever gone there so now there's three there this is back to two and this here another sheep's been added but every turn another sheep gets out of there as long as there's already things there then sheep is added so you can see how these places are starting to get quite full you're going to get a lot of animals by going there whereas this place was taken last turn so it's back to a cow and this was taken on the first turn but not the second turn, so now we have a pig and a sheep there. And it just accumulates until somebody takes it. So this turn, Jason gets to go first. And again, he's got big plans. So he's gonna go here and he's gonna pay his three stone and one reed and get a stall and very wisely put it right there. Andrea is completely broke, even though she's got a nice farm. So she really needs some resources. And right here, she gets to snag three stone in one spot because it's accumulated quite a bit. Jason has a brilliant plan with his six wood, goes here and can decides to spend all of his wood on fences. 
So he gets to build six fences, and he's going to go like this. Three there. And three there. And now he's got this whole area is now sealed off. He's got a stall and still his cottage, of course. And in the future, he can put another one here, and that'll divide this into two nice storage areas. He can never remove a fence that he's already played or move a building he's already played, but he could then divide this up later. So now Andrea still thinking she needs a lot of resources, so she goes back here because first player would be nice to get back, but three wood would be even nicer right now. And now Jason, for his last move, will go here and get this well-accumulated spot get a nice horse to go in a stall and get some sheep because he's going to build a sheep empire. And then Andrea gets her last turn and she's got plenty of place for some pigs. So she goes here, gets another pig and has a spot for her sheep. Now at the end of this round, Andrea, so it's the end of the round because everybody's played all their workers. Andrea has one cow, one sheep and two pigs. She has more, two or more of pigs, so she gets a free pig, and she has plenty of place to put them. Jason has two sheep, so he gets a free sheep, and he has plenty of place to do that. So that's how the game accumulates. And so next round, we're going to do the same thing. You're going to repopulate all these areas that have the arrows after you take off all of your workers. And... This place right here you're going to see is going to start looking really attractive because it's going to have three sheep on it by next turn, even though these places are only going to have one pig and one horse. And this will have a sheep and a pig. I'm sorry, a cow and a pig. So things are going to start accumulating. This is going to have four stone on it next turn. That'll be nice. And you guys are going to start being wealthy enough that you're going to be able to start buying some of these special buildings, which there's only one each of. So there's kind of a rush to build them because the other person obviously won't be able to get one once you buy it. And that's how the game progresses. Okay, so just to recap, once all these are gone, that will be eight rounds. At the end of that eight rounds, you're gonna look at your farm, you're gonna see the awesome empire that you built, and then you're gonna get this sheet out. Again, you're gonna put the total number of each type of animal you had and add it up, and you get one point each for each animal. Then you get your bonus points based on the grid at the side of the box. And hopefully you have three of each kind of animal so that you don't get a penalty. But if you do, that's there's strategies that are okay with a penalty. You just have to get more points other places. This spot here is for each one of these things that you've populated. So it could be fenced in or have buildings on it. But as long as all of these are fully used, so fenced off, uh, it doesn't have to have animals in them necessarily. They just have to be fenced or have buildings on them. And then lastly, the special points, if it focuses, there we go, the points for each of the buildings. So for instance, this gets 1.020. I already explained that based on the number of resources you have left over and five. And that's it. So you add it up. Whoever has the most points wins. And hopefully you guys have a great trip and this made sense. And you can call me at any time if you have any questions. And oh my gosh, this took a half hour video. So hopefully it wasn't too boring. <laughs> Bye.